Well, we're here at the wonderful Meadowlands Fishery in Warwickshire. Went on to the method, had a few chucks on the method now, and uh, bingo, decent feeling fish on here. Hook that beautiful carp on the hybrid. Definitely one of my favourite venues. I love these big open water venues where you've got lots of options in front of you. Got to be honest, I normally come here and fish the Silverfish Leagues this time of year. Um, we're right in the middle of winter, obviously, and uh, we're going to have a go for some winter carp today. So something a little bit different. Um, I think with winter carping, it's, it's uh, important to think about the conditions leading up to when you're fishing. Um, for example, if you had a nice strong southwesterly mild conditions, you could really attack the venue, start off attacking. You've got loads of open water here in front of us. Um, it's a lovely winter's day today, but we've had loads and loads of rain over the last couple of days uh, and this morning. And just literally a few days ago, this lake was frozen. So I think it's going to be hard. That's going to affect how we approach it today. And uh, we'll talk about that during the day. So as I said, the conditions are going to be tricky today. It's going to lead me into a more negative approach. Um, I think we're going to have to search out where the fish are today. I say we've got lots of open water in front of us. And to me, that means probably we're going to start on a bomb. Um, a bomb means that I can uh, cast around to different areas in the peg without actually putting, I don't really want dollops of feed going here, there and everywhere at this stage. Um, if the carp start livening up and waking up, we can obviously start thinking about putting feed in. Um, so I think initially um, I'm going to clip up on a couple of different lines which I'll talk to you about that again in some detail in a little while um, and just have a cast around the peg probably 20 minute chucks that type of thing so leave it in, in a decent amount of time to start with and um, we'll take it from there. Okay, so we're going to start on the uh, what I call the BBB method. This is the bomb and bright bait method, and it just means a bomb with, with either a bright coloured wafter, or some corn maybe, or some bread, something like that this time of year. All these baits work really well. They're bright, visible baits, which is what we're looking at. And the bomb, the bomb means that we're not going to be depositing feed and, uh, and m maybe messing the swim up for later on. So that's how we're going to start. So my sticks are in the uh, bank here. They're three metres apart, which gives us a six metre wrap from start to finish. Um, I've clipped up actually three times. Now, you may be asking, why do I clip up three times? Um, and the reason is this negative approach we talked about. Um, I've got, I'm clipped up at 60 metres, uh, back at 54, and again at 48. And what that enables me to do then is to be able to search the swim um, a bit at a time, with this bomb approach so we're not feeding everywhere. So for example, what I'm going to do is hit the first clip, which is at 48 metres. I've got a marker in the bank uh, ahead of me and that'll be my starting point. I'll probably have a 20 minute chuck, something like that around that time. We'll time it on a stopwatch. I think it's very important to, uh, to have a stopwatch because the time you've literally no idea if you haven't got that watch there. Um, during that time, it's a 20 minute chuck, you say quite a long chuck. Um, you can pick up a good book and have a read if you want to but what I like to do is actually concentrate on the tip we're looking for any sign of a fish keep your eye on the water and keep your eye on the tip the slightest movement gives us an indication there may be a fish there so it's all about searching for fish at the moment so after that first 20 minute chuck if there hasn't been a sign I'm still clipped up at 48 meters but what I'm going to do now is chuck maybe 10 yards to the left so I pick another marker 10 yards to the left and we'll have a 20 minute chuck there and again if that doesn't produce anything we'll go 10 yards to the right so that way on that 48 meter line that gives us an hour's worth of fishing where we've, we've had a, a kind of fan across the 48 meter line to see if there's any fish there um, after that I'd literally just take the clip off that will then take me out onto the, uh, the 54 meter line and then we'll do the same thing we'll have a fan across and all the time we're just fishing the bomb at the moment and we're not putting bait in that may disturb the fishing later on then I can take that second clip off and then I'm back on that 60 metre line, that's the longest line I've clipped up at. doesn't mean we have to finish there, we can always take that one off and go further, but at the minute that's a 60 metre line. Again, you can chuck around the peg to see if we can try and locate the fish. 
So at some stage, after fishing the bomb and casting around the peg, I'm going to make the decision to go on to a hybrid feeder and get some bait in. I've fished here plenty of times before and it certainly seems when you get, even on these cold days, when you get into the middle part of the afternoon, the carp really wants something to, to home in on and mooch about over. So that's when I think you, we need to think about putting some bait into a hybrid feeder. And something a little bit different, not just the, necessarily the micros, I've got the... Um, the uh, the micro mix here which I put some shredded corn in for example which I think is a fantastic addition uh, a winter addition to um, to your micro mix which is on its own is fairly bland I mean we, you have to use fishery pellets here like you do in lots of places and it's just something to make them a little bit different you can add flavors you can add different color pellets and and something as I say I like to do is is to shred some corn up with a bait chopper and put some fine uh, flecks of corn in there and it really does look lovely So my bomb rig is simplicity itself. I've got an inline, one ounce inline bomb with a black stem, um, 30 centimetres of 020 line uh, to a size 12 QM1 hook and a long hair, I reckon that's, I haven't measured it, but I think it's, I don't know, 15 mil, long, well, probably longer, maybe two centimetres long hair. And the reason I've got long hair is so that I can put on a couple of discs of bread or two pieces of corn um, and it, it, it's quite flexible for the type of bait I want. I've got another one set up with a shorter hair which I'll use for the uh, bright coloured wafter. Um, so those are my bomb rigs. So my method rigs are very, very simple. I've got two, two different rigs I'm using. Um, a small 30 gram hybrid with a long black stem. Um, that's got 10 centimetres of uh, 020 line, a 12 QM1 and a, a fairly short hair for a wafter. And then I've got the other one is a 36 gram medium, which has got the same terminal bits attached to that. So it's a one rod day today. It's a really simple setup. I've got an essential 12 foot bream, it's called. I know we're fishing for carp, but the rod's called a bream. So it's a 12 foot medium uh, rod with a, a fairly tippy action, which it makes it really, really nice to cast the sort of distances we are today. A nice mid range rod. Um, the reel is, the uh, 4,000 size gold reel with uh, loaded with 0.22 mainline. I think that's about seven pound, six, seven pound mainline. It's a really simple setup and uh, there you go. Well, we came off the bomb Went on to the method, had a few chucks on the method now, and uh, bingo, seems to have had the right result. Got a decent feeling fish on here. There we go, what a beauty. That's what we came for. go that's uh, first carp of the day um, it's come on the hybrid feeder uh, we went through the um, I actually went through the, uh, the, the fan on the bomb so at, at uh, 48 meters we tried the three lines nothing that was 20 minutes per chuck so that was an hour gone um, unclipped went on to the next fan which was the uh, the 54 meter line uh, so that was uh, another hour that's two hours and then after about five chucks after putting the hybrid feeder on we've had that beautiful carp first, uh, first up there. So interestingly, as I thought, the um, time of day I think is a factor. We've put the hybrid on, you know, maybe a coincidence, maybe not, but for sure now it's uh, carp o'clock. Hopefully we'll now get a few more bites as the session progresses. Oh, there's certainly a few fish seem to be moving now. So uh, fingers crossed, here we go. Having had that first carp off the um, the middle line of my second clip the 54 meter line on the hybrid I think that's the area now that I'm going to concentrate on for the next few well several chucks really um, obviously having had a fish gives you the confidence that there may be others on that line so certainly that's the area to concentrate on for now and rather than chucking about trying to locate fish 
I think the emphasis now is on chucking straight down that one hole. Well, as predicted, that was a grueler today. Uh, we thought it would be with the lakes being frozen earlier in the week, all the rain last night, um, but I think it vindicated the uh, decision to go negative, super negative at the start. Um, yeah, I had that bite on the, um, the hybrid, hooked that beautiful carp on the hybrid and declared it's carp o'clock. Uh, it wasn't carp o'clock, I got that wrong. Uh, that was the only carp of the day, but what a beauty. Absolutely stunning fish. Um, had a few skimmers as well on the hybrid throughout the day, probably six or seven skimmers. All in all, a cracking winter's day fishing at a beautiful fishery here at Meadowlands.